want to welcome you to the word segment of today's service. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. No evil shall be for you. Use the name of Jesus Christ to achieve the results that we want to achieve. In accordance not to the visions and the plans that God has given over it. Come because of who you are, not because of what you do. If they come out against you one way, they shall flee before you seven ways. Join together in perfect unity. It is love it holds all things together. It binds all things together. The glory of the Father has come to reside in us. So that glory, the totality of the glory of God in heaven has come to live in us. When they prayed, they were filled. When they prayed, they were filled. When we pray, we are filled. Glory, 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 hallelujah, praise the Lord. Welcome to another beautiful Sunday service with us here at the LW UK Zone. Hey, I hope you're having a most fantastic and most wonderful time. And on behalf of our highly esteemed Zone Secretary, Pastor Wilson Grace, I welcome you. Praise the Lord. Welcome to another Sunday service, ready to read ready for the word of God to renew and transform your life. Glory to God. But before we get started, I'd like to thank my highly esteemed Zono Secretary, Pastor Wilson Grace, for this beautiful, beautiful opportunity to moderate today's service. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But before we get started, let's all stand on our feet and bow our head as we pray and we thank God for this beautiful, beautiful day. As I said, it could be morning, could be afternoon, good good wherever you are just thank god for the day for the day that you're about to have and the day that you've had and everything that you're about to receive in this service this lovely beautiful service glory to god let's just lower our head Oh, Libra Casonte Branda Casque, Libra Cante Bradesca, Limande Giribosco, O Riges Canta Bayarade. Oh, precious Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful service. We thank you for every word, every moment, every praise and worship, everything that we receive in this service. It is true of your word, it is true of your will, and it's true of who you are. Limante Crabagasco, Ilimandi Crabaca, Ah, Rendico Bra Escate Monda Gibra Ayarade. Rakabasunto kubere ilikas kanti bra aha. Rakabasunto kubena ne karakas ko iliba. Rakabase te kiri liba. O rigas katabande giske alale. Rakabas ko ta radis kabaradin diske ili. Rakabasuto shubrandis kaladi karakatasi. Arakabasante kiri liba. Regi monti karakas ko ili brande. Rakabaso keliba. Mente kibra a libra kaskeli kar. Riga basente ke baralu, rakali na mandes ke iraka kareri, raka basunte ke rikeka, raka basha tayaradu si kremedi aradi, rika basan tayaradu, oh raka bashete ke eleba, raka basete ke aradi, raka basente ke ri alabaru, radika sende ke bi aradi, rika skatara, rekeba, 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 o mante ke baradu. Soto kubra ande rigas kateli bro o shiske dana mandeski era baho rakaba seteske bahadish kandaba rige de ba soto kuba yaradi rakaba sente kibara rika karada di rika ba rakaba sente kere ba zukro ore ba yaradi o rakaba sente kebi era ha iza karada da iraba soto shobra endeska anandi riga das kebaro o mandiska a o Oh, glory to God, glory to God. Oh, thank you, Father Lord. We thank you for this beautiful, beautiful platform that you have created for your word to be shared. Yes, this 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 channel is changing lives. The words that are about to receive today, Father, they are received, they are receiving it with meekness and gladness. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Yes, they are elevated, they are changed. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. 
Amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God. I hope you are warmed up and you're prepared. But before we get started with our next, you know, before I introduce our most wonderful, most beautiful, most glamorous choir, I want you to go and invite everybody in your household to come and sit down and to watch this service. You know, anybody, even if it's just your neighbor next door, go and knock at the door. Just let them know that service has started. If anything, post it on your social media platform, send it through your, via your WhatsApp, your Instagram, Twitter, wherever, and share the link so that everybody will be having an opportunity and a blessing to join in today's service and receive something something the same way you will be receiving you want them to receive as well let's be sharers and sharers of the gospel oh hallelujah but without further ado i must beloved i must wonderful i must excellent be lwuk zone a choir Who can describe how beautiful 
Glory, 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 glory. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, what a time. What a time of worship. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Karu, Kasila Hattis. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Welcome to Rhapsody Time. Rhapsody Time. Blessing Time. <laughs> uh, I'll first like to start uh, with thanking my mum. Um, Esteemed Zona Secretary, Pastor Wilson Grace, sir, thank you for the opportunity in leading today's Rhapsody segment. Um, wherever you are, please check out your Rhapsody. It is Sunday, the 23rd of July, the month of joy. I hope you are remaining joyful this um, month of joy. Today's Rhapsody is called You Are Top Class. You're Top Class. And the opening scripture is from James chapter 1, verses 18. And it says, Of his own will, because he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Amen. In the first sentence, in paragraph, the pastor is saying, Observe the beginning of the construction in the opening verse. It says, Of his own will, because he us. That means, the Lord gave birth to us. Of his own violation. It was his choice to give birth to us with the word of truth that we should be a kind or a type of first fruit of his creatures. So, saying, he's asking the question here, he's saying, um, what's the meaning of first fruits, right? And first fruit means the first and the best of anything, it implies top class. Wow. Wow. That's deep. And he says in the Rhapsody, you're top class. I'm top class. He says, excellent all the way. I'm excellent all the way. You see, Pastor, a while back, he told us as we're well, reading the Rhapsody, not just read it for reading's sake. You you um, communicate with the Rhapsody, or should I say, you interact with a, the with a Rhapsody. If there's something that's resonating with your spirit, you respond, Right? So he said, I'm top class. Say, I'm excellent all the way. All right. Why are you excellent? He says, because you're born again. You're, you're, sorry, you're born of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The same truth is reiterated by the apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 23. And he says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And John also referenced the fact that this happened by God's own design. It was his will. It was, you, it was his will for you to be born not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. And I've highlighted this scripture many times. For something to be incorruptible, that means everything has tried to corrupt it. But it's not corruptible. Sickness, death, failure, lack. It has tried. <laughs> But it's incorruptible. It's impen- impenetrable. Impenetrable. That's the life that you have. And it lives and abides from ev- forever. So, you're not born again one day and you're not born again another day. It, it's, it's, it abides. It stays. It remains. It settles. You're born again, now and forever. Praise God. It says in First John chapter, in John chapter one, verses twelve to twelve to thirteen. It says, "But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. It was his will to make you top class. I am top class." So live your best and be your best for him. Keep your mind on the image of you that God has given you in his word. You're his peculiar treasure, his reproduction, his excellent handiwork. I'm a peculiar treasure. I'm his reproduction. I'm an excellent handiwork. 
I'm a bundle of success. I'm an achiever and I'm a victor in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm a victor in Christ Jesus. I like the fact that it's talking about being born again, being born again, being born anew. It connotes to the fact that regardless of what you were before or what you saw yourself as before, this is a new start. Right? You're born anew. He says, all things pass away and all things become new. Right? So, your top class, further study in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 29. It's a beautiful, beautiful portion of scripture. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 in the Amplified Classic. And it says, um, it says here, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchased possession, purchased special people, that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Display the virtues and perfections. You're an expression of his glory and his beauty. His virtues and his perfections. Ah, I'm perfect. God, I do this. I'm perfect. James chapter 1. Verses 22 to 25. I love this. I love the way. In the New King James um, translation. I love the way it puts it. It says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. But for he observes himself, goes away and immediately forget, forgets what kind of man he was. But he, he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this one will be blessed in what he does. Ah, There's two parts to this. It, why did pastor put this scripture in here? Um, he's showing us, this rhapsody as well, this is showing us that what the word says concerning us, but it's more than just what the word says concerning us, is what are you saying concerning yourself? You have to personalize it. You have to put it to work. That's why it says, you be a doer of the word. It says here, you, uh, uh, um, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately, immediately forgets what kind of man he was. So you're looking at what God has said. But there's an action that you have to take. Like I said, there's two things. The second one is the action. You have a part to play in ensuring that you are top class. And that's your acknowledgement. All right. So we're going we're gonna to say a confession right now. I want you to say these words with me. Just bow your heads where you are. Repeat these words after me. Dear Father... I thank you for you've made me the expression of your beauty. <laughs> Excellence, perfections and grace. Thank you for your glory in my life. I declare that my life is for your praise and glory and I fulfill my destiny in Christ, bringing forth fruits unto righteousness in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was Rhapsody of Realities. Um, I would like to also, uh, again thank my highly esteemed Zona Secretary, Pastor Wilson Grace. Thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity. Love you dearly and enjoy the rest of a beautiful Sunday service. Life for now. Sixty-four-year-old Erdin Etseg from Mongolia endured 10 long years of struggle with multiple debilitating health conditions, with one appearing fast on the heels of the other. Her ordeal began in 2013 with symptoms such as frequent tiredness, weight loss, incessant hunger, numbness and tingling sensations in her hands and feet, and never-ending thirst. Upon visiting the hospital and undergoing several tests, she was diagnosed with diabetes, and in the course of time, her condition further deteriorated until she was diagnosed with heart failure.
chronic kidney failure, gout, and high blood pressure. These compounding health conditions were accompanied with rapid weight gain, swollenness in her face, hands, and legs due to water retention. Rendered incapacitated by these draining symptoms, Erdan Etzeg found it impossible to walk, raise her hands, or do anything for herself. Finding herself at the bottom curve in the pit of despair and overwhelmed with her troubles, she realized she desperately needed a solution to her predicament. It was at this point she heard about and registered to participate in the Healing Streams Live Healing Services with Pastor Chris. At the Healing Services, the Man of God Pastor Chris ministered divine healing and vitalization to the global audience and charged everyone to do what they hitherto couldn't do. Now wherever you are, Receive healing. Receive healing. A devil can't stop you now. It's out of your body. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Receive your healing right now. Go ahead. Whatever you could not do, go ahead and do it. Something truly remarkable took place in Erdin Etzeg's life on this special day. Watch as she tells the whole story. My name is Erdin Etzeg. I am 64 years old. I am speaking from Mongolia. I had a long medical history. I have been suffering from type 2 diabetes for more than 20 years due to complications of diabetes mellitus. I had problems with my heart and kidneys. Then I was diagnosed with chronic kidney failure. I could not walk on my own and did not walk up the stairs and could not raise my hands. I could not do many things. When I went outside, my eyes flushed and were dazzling. My legs were wobbling everywhere and I couldn't settle them myself. So I had to get the help of others in everything. The doctors required me to enter the dialysis machine, but I refused and tried to put my hope in God. In such a situation, I hoped to God that he would heal me. I was always sure that there was a way out and I would be healed. My friend Negri has told me many times about the healing ministry of Pastor Chris she also gave me the Healing to the Nations magazine and Pastor Chris books. I read all the books in a row. Then I realized that it was necessary to participate in the Healing Stream service with Pastor Chris. I sat for three nights in a row. With great patience and expectation, I watched the Healing Stream in Mongolian. I prayed and followed what Pastor Chris said. During the service, Pastor Chris prayed for us and said that do what you could not do before. I suddenly raised my hands up. My hands, especially my left hand, could not move up and I could only lift it this way. And now I can hold my hands as I want. I can move my legs as I want. After the service, I didn't feel any pain anymore. Now I feel strong and my health has improved. Besides my feeling, the results of my tests confirm my healing. According to the doctor's requirements, I take tests every 14 days. My urea and creatinine level has decreased after my healing. I am completely healed. Here is my medical notebook. All the medications I took before my healing are marked here. Before my healing, I was prescribed a lot of pills and antibiotics two times a day. And after my healing, I stopped taking them. I am healed. I am healed of kidney failure and diabetes and heart disease. Now, after receiving healing, I can move freely and do housework without fatigue. I go out on my own and buy groceries and exercise in the pool and also evangelize and spread the healing magazine and carry out ministry freely. I can move as I want and I dance with the kids, especially at the children's service. 
I danced for a long time with the children of our church for such a miraculous healing. I am very grateful to God and the partners of the healing school. We trust that you have been blessed by today's broadcast. If you are not yet born again, we invite you to make Jesus the Lord of your life by saying this prayer. Mean it with all your heart and God will hear you. Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe God raised him from the dead and he is alive today. I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. And by my faith in his name, the name of Jesus, I receive remission of sins for my soul. I receive eternal life into my heart. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you for giving me a new life. I am born again. I am a child of God now. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you have just said this prayer, congratulations. You are now a child of God. We would like you to send us an email at feedback at enterthehealingschool.org and we will send you a copy of Now That You Were Born Again, a book by Pastor Chris as you begin your journey in Christ. To receive more information on how you can grow as a Christian, please call us now or visit our website. God bless you.
sing it is love Seven inspirations for success. I believe each one of us can be very successful, but uh, you cannot be successful until you know God's plan for your life. Because 
you could be a success for you. But being a success for God is different. A success for you means that you've achieved your goals, your dreams. A success for God means you've achieved God's goals, God's dreams. So success for life is not about measuring how much you accomplished in what you said for yourself. Success for life means your accomplishments on the basis of God's calling, God's vision, God's dream, God's plan. And it always has to be done in God's way, not in man's way. In my life, which is not yet a very long one, I haven't lived too many years, so um, I cannot talk to you like maybe somebody in his, uh, in his 80s or in his 90s or, or even more. But suddenly, I've had many successes, many. I've been very successful in God's plans. I've been very successful. I say that because at different points in my life, because You measure success at different points of your life. If you were in the academics and you were in class one and you were successful in your exams, you would be a success. But it'd be for that class, not in class two or three, because you, you're not yet in two or three. But someone else who is in class two or class three will be measured according to what class he is. And when you get to four, you will be measured again whether or not you've been successful this next time. So success is measured at different stages of life. And I've had different stages of my life And the most important thing is always, what does God think? What does God want? Because if you don't know that, how can you know that you're successful? How can you know? There'll be no way to know. Except he was clear with you as to what you should do. But I've been a a leader of many people for a long time, and I've come to understand there are not so many people who care to know what God thinks. There are not a lot of people who even think that God is concerned about their lives, their individual lives, to have a plan for them. But the truth is, he does. He not only cares, he has a plan. A plan that's not only communicable, but a plan that can be actuated. And that's so important. But I've 
had these seven inspirations that have helped me and continue to help me as my life's focus. in this journey that we all are a part of. You know, life is a journey. It's a race. It's a race with a direction. We're just, we're not running to nowhere. No, it's a race with a direction. God's got a plan. It's a race. It's a race, and that's the way it's described for us in the Bible. And not only is it a race, it's full of battles. What kind of battles? The fight of faith. The fight of faith. Circumstances challenge you. The things that you meet on this journey, rough roads, difficulties, crises, adversaries, the all on the way. As you race to the end, the hills and valleys. But if you're focused and keep your inspiration, you can win. I found out there are too many people who lose their inspiration. They don't have a focus on their inspiration. And they lose in the battles of life the fight of faith. Sometimes they don't even realize that they are in a conflict zone. Because they're not sensitive enough to recognize those things. But if you keep your inspiration, it wouldn't matter what part of the race you find yourself. You have the same attitude delivered to you by this amazing inspirational ministry of God through the Holy Ghost in your life. Seven inspirations that can turn you on for success or keep you in the path of success and keep you winning and winning and winning and always winning. I'm always winning. Oh, yeah. I'm always winning. I don't know what it is to lose. I'm always winning. Always winning. Number one, the inspiration of the word. What I find the word of God to be is amazing. It's been so extraordinary. I'm going to read you a few scriptures as we get along just to help you understand the thoughts that have come to me these years and that continue to inspire me every day. I don't have blue days. I don't have any moments of, you know, like some people say, the, they say that they have a, a, a down day, okay? They, they feel terrible one day or for some moment or something, 
No, I don't have those days and I don't have those moments. I'm ever inspired. There are people who have known me for years. And they can tell you that's all they've ever seen. I'm ever inspired. In my privacy, I'm inspired. Always inspired. Because of these things. I said, number one, the inspiration of the word. What I've come to find the word of God to be. How the word has blessed me and inspired me. Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 16. All scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Think about it. The scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means it's God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Meaning it's an instruction manual for the life of righteousness. That's amazing. And I'm thinking, wow, scripture came from God and it's profitable, meaning it gives you the advantage for doctrine, for teaching, meaning it teaches you. It indoctrinates you for reproof and correction. Think about it. If you were going wrong, there's reproof for you. There's correction for you. Then, as an instruction manual, what other material is good for life? What else could give you this advantage in life? And I've thought about it. I've not found a better material that's as inspiring. Think about it. Let me give you the next verse. The next verse. The, the 17th verse is wonderful. Look at it. It says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, leaves nothing out. So I find the scripture was given to position me to be very successful. He says that the man of God may be perfect. That means excellent. I knew I was going to have an excellent life. I knew many years ago, I found some things in the scriptures that gave me the impression, the absolute understanding that I was going to be very successful. I knew it. It was a, you know, a projectile. And, and you knew where it was going. It was programmed. I found out the word of God was given to program my life in a certain direction. And it didn't matter what I was going to encounter in life. I was programmed for success. I was programmed for excellence. I was programmed for prosperity. I was going to be prosperous in everything. Didn't you read about Abraham? The Bible says that he was successful in everything. Didn't you read about David? He was successful in everything. I knew I was going to be successful. There was no question about it. There was an inspiring document. The scripture. All scripture is God breathed. And is profitable. It's profitable. Hallelujah, that the man of God may be perfect, perfect, sound, equipped. Go to St. John's Gospel, and this, this was something else. St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, I'm going to read to you from verse number 1. And I want you to understand, this is the story of God's Word. It's amazing. It tells us the story of God's Word. But I'm not going to go very far. Because I just want to get to verse number three so you can understand. In this chapter, what John tells us is how the word came to be flesh. How the word that God spoke came to be a man. But what I want you to notice in these first three verses is what the word was doing. Before he became flesh. 
All right. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. This is amazing. Before he became flesh, in verse 14, he was God. The Word that came from the mouth of God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. We're talking the Logos of God. The Logos of God. He says all things were made by him. This scripture that he says is God breathed. He says all things were made by the word that God breathed. He's telling us before it was written, it was God breathed. Do you understand it? This is the logos of God. It was God breathed. Somebody had to get it and write it down. And that's why it was called scripture. So he says to us, what is written scripture is God breathed. Now that, that was God breathed. He says, it made all things. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. I thought, wow, wow, God's word, God's word made everything. What an inspiration. Hi, what an inspiration. Blessed be God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I got to show you something else. In, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12, I'm going to read to you from three translations. First, the King James Version. For the word of God is quick. The Logos of God is quick. Quick. That means, well, I've got to read the rest so you can make up your mind. For, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's amazing. He seems to be describing something that's more than a writing. So I want to read to you from the New International Version, the NIV. Take a look at it. It says, for the word of God is living and active. That's what King James called quick and powerful. Living and active. Think about it. The word, the logos of God. Is living and active. So when God spoke it out, all that time there was God breathed. It was living. It was never dead. It was living and it was active, doing something sharper than any double edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing, to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Let's read it from the Amplified Translation. You're going to love this. It says, for the word that God speaks, he's alive and full of power. I told you, I'm inspired by the word of God. I'm inspired to think what word this is. It's living and active. Look what it says. Making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. Oh, God. Oh, God. It is active, operative, energizing, effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, soul, and the immortal spirit, and of joints and marrow. Of the deepest parts of our nature exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart blessed be God oh hallelujah and think about this think about this I'm gonna read to you from first Peter first Peter chapter 1 read from verse 23 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by this same Logos of God. Oh God, which liveth and abideth forever. And I'm thinking, that word, that's God breathes, that is living and active. It is alive, operative, energizing. Think about it. I was born by that word. 
I'm an offspring of that word being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the logos of God which liveth and abideth forever look at the 25th verse oh boy but the word of the Lord endure it forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Oh God. Hallelujah. You know, I was thinking about it. This is the very word that is so alive. That is so powerful. And it says, this is the word which by the gospel has been preached to you. This is what's come to me. This is what I embraced. I've got it in me now. I've got it. Oh boy. This is the same word that Moses got. It changed his life forever. That Joshua got. It changed his life forever. David got it. It turned him loose for God. Solomon got it. He was never the same. Then it came to Peter, James, and John. It changed him forever. I got that word in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Number two. The inspiration of the spirit you know i was thinking about it the words of jesus in saint john's gospel chapter 14 reading from verse 15 it says if you love me keep my commandments next verse and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever then I thought about it. The word another is from the Greek alos. And alos means one of the same kind. Type and quality. So he's telling us, because this comforter, if you read in the next verse, let's read. Even the spirit of truth, he's talking about the Holy Ghost. So we go back to verse 16. This Holy Ghost, he says, is like Jesus. He's just like Jesus. Boy, to think about the Holy Ghost. I said, this is amazing. He says, I'll pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Not for some time, but forever. He's going to be with, with you always and forever. Then I got to thinking from the Amplified Translation, I was amazed at what I saw. Oh boy. And I'll ask the Father, and He will give you another comforter. He broke it down because the Greek is Allos Paracletos. And Allos Paracletos means another one that is the same that's called alongside to help. And that word is broken into these seven synonyms for Paraclet. So he says, counselor. So this another, this Holy Spirit is a counselor. He's a helper. He's an intercessor. He's an advocate like a lawyer. Counsel for the defense. He's a strengthener. Oh man, I never have to pray again. Strengthen me, Lord. Because he's come to live in me. The strength in that now lives in me. I don't have to call for strength. I don't have to hope for strength. That's what he came to do. Jesus said, I'll pray the Father, ask the Father, and he will give you. He will give you the counselor. The counselor come to live in you. He'll give you a helper. I don't have to say, oh, I don't have anybody to help me. He's my helper. He lives inside me. Wow. An intercessor. He prays for me, through me. He does it. Can you imagine that? I've got someone inside me who prays for me. Hallelujah. And through me, he can pray for others too. He's my advocate. I said, counsel for the defense. He talks to me. He tells me exactly what he, he shows me how to win every case. Think about it. Think about it. And then, my strengthener and stand by. When life looks dark and things seem impossible and difficult. And you're thinking, what am I going to do? Why are you still thinking? You get the kicks on the inside. It's like, hey, I'm here. You can win. I'm here. I'll lead you. 
I'll help you. And suddenly you realize you are not alone. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost inspires me. The inspiration of the Spirit. The inspiration of the Spirit. Think how he led the apostles. Oh, Acts chapter 8, verse 29. Think how he led them. The Bible says, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. The Spirit said to Philip. And I was thinking, Philip was somewhere. Maybe at a crossroads. He know exactly what's the next thing. And the Spirit said, the Spirit said, I thought, this is beautiful. Then I go to chapter 10, verse 19, book of Acts. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, the Spirit said, behold, three men seek thee. The Spirit said, see how the Spirit was talking to them and telling them exactly what to do. I was inspired. Do you know what it is to have Jesus with you telling you what to do? That's exactly what's happening because the Holy Ghost is like Jesus. He said, I'll pray the Father. He said, another one that's exactly like me. He'll love you like me. The Spirit who's like Jesus said to Philip, join yourself to this child. The Spirit said to Peter, and then think what he did with their lives. He made them bold. Acts chapter 2, verse number 14. This man, Simon Peter, who had been timid and denied that he knew Jesus. Now he gets the Holy Ghost. And there's a crowd wondering, why are these men drunken at this time? And Peter if you thought about the kind of man that he was, living out his name, Simon, a reed, shaken with the wind, he should have run away. But look at that verse, verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice. Oh, what a transformation. The Holy Ghost made him bold. What a transformation. You know, in my life, I was growing up to be a timid little boy. I was growing up in fear. Heard too many bad stories. So I was living in fear as a kid. Maybe I would have become a man full of fear. But just at the right time, I received the Holy Ghost. And when I did, it changed my life forever. All my fears disappeared. Everything was gone in a split second. My life took on a new meaning. Look at chapter 4 from verse 5. Book of Acts. And it came to pass on the mark that they are rulers, the rulers of the people, and elders, and scribes, and Annas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them, set the apostles in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Talking about the man that was healed at the gate of the temple called Beautiful. Then Peter, that's the same Peter who had been timid and afraid of them only a few days ago. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the important men, by what means he's made whole, be it known unto y'all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, blessed be God, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, something had happened. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost made him bold.
look at it. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Uh-oh, but it wasn't Jesus that was there. It was the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is like Jesus. Oh, the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. When I received the Holy Ghost, I was no longer timid. I was no longer full of fear. I became like Peter, full of boldness. Hallelujah. Let me show you something else. In chapter 13 and verse number 45, you'd see Paul and Barnabas. What happened to them? The multitude had charged them with some kind of stuff because they were jealous of them as they preached the gospel and the Gentiles believed the gospel. Look at it from verse 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then, look at this, I love it. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. Who could have done that for them? In the presence of these Jews, they waxed bold. Oh, what a spirit of grace. Hallelujah. He made them bold. I thought, wow, I got the Holy Ghost. I've got the same spirit, the same spirit that changed Peter forever. The same spirit that changed John forever. The same spirit that changed Paul and Barnabas forever. That same spirit lives in me today. Hallelujah. I'm inspired by the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Wasn't that just lovely? Wasn't that just wonderful receiving such word, you know, such nourishment for the spirit? Oh, glory to God. Oh, thank you, Father Lord. You know, I hope you, I bet you're very glad that you joined in today. And I, I bet you're very glad that you invited all those people that you invited to join in, you know, because only here you can receive words like that. Only here you can be elevated in such a manner and i do hope you go back again to listen to these words you know they're here for you you know for you to receive you know for you to 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 come and watch time and time again so don't you know don't slack off come back and watch again there's further there is there are older services there are older messages well the message of god can never the word of god can never be old but our previous messages are still here so take some time throughout your week to listen and you know and go over again we have our, our various group pastors you know they, 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 they every single week we have a new group pastor uh, bringing the word to you so don't be shy you know subscribe and listen and receive praise the lord that's why this platform is here for is for your benefit praise the lord but without further ado as we have come to the house of the lord we must come with our offerings you know so get your offerings ready and get ready to give
glory. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I hope you have given. If not, you know, the, the, the details are still on the screen. You know, take your time to give. And as you're giving, give with a joyful heart. As you have given, be exalted and be happy because what you have done is an investment in the spirit. You know, praise the Lord. As you have given, you will have more than you can ever imagine. Praise the Lord. But Father Lord, we thank you for these your children that are given. They're given with a joyful heart. They're joyful givers. You know, they're a partaker of the gospel. They understand the works that we're doing. They understand the importance of their giving, of their types, of their offerings unto you, Lord. For there is no greater honor, there is no greater joy but to give unto you. But as, you, as they have given, Father Lord, more shall be multiplied unto them. Oh, and the devourer is rebuked against them in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father Lord, we thank you for give even the seed that you have given to them for them to be able to sow. Because we know all comes from you. And as we give, we are giving with a joyful heart. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But now, here is my favorite part of the service. Yes, and I am so honored. I am so, so, so very honored to, you know, call out, call upon you, you know, because this is my favorite part of the segment, calling on you the first time. It's you, yes, you that are sitting at home. This is your first time joining our service online. Wherever you are, I do welcome you. On behalf of our man of God, Pastor Chris Oyakilome, and our highly esteemed zonal secretary, Pastor Wilson Grace, we welcome you to BLWU Zone A. And now there will be some details showing below, you know, for how you can get in contact with us via our email, via social media platform. You know, even here, leave a comment below. We see every comment. So leave a comment below and we'll get in contact with you or just email us or call us whatsoever you're comfortable with. Even on our BLWK Zone 8 Instagram and social media pages, you can message us and there will always be someone there to get back to you. And we can allocate you to the nearest Christ Embassy Church to you or a BLW Campus Ministry Church Fellowship, wherever you are. We are everywhere. We are here to bring the word of God. So wherever you are, welcome to the family. Welcome to the home, to, to, to the family of Christ. Glory to God. But without further ado, I cannot say goodbye just yet. Anyway, I'm not going to say goodbye just yet. We don't say goodbye. I say see you later. But before we get to that part, I would like to take the announcements. You know, the announcements will be showing on the screen. So without further ado, take a look at the announcements. Healing streams this week. We have prayed, we have partnered, and we have publicized and prepared places all in preparation for our much anticipated healing streams, live healing services with Pastor Chris happening this Friday. It is your appointed time for healing, so make sure to tune in and participate from 3 p.m. this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You do not want to miss out during this powerful time. Unending praise, which commenced in March, is continuing. To participate at any point, please use the link below. And finally, don't forget to join us every night at 10 p.m. to pray with our highly esteemed Pastor Wilson. Glory to God. And I hope you took down those notes. You know, you took down those dates and those times and those programs so that you will be a participator. You'll be there and participate in life. Not even if it's not live in the flesh, but live online or wherever you are, you are participating and you're not missing out on anything that is happening. But without further ado, it's time to say not goodbye, but see you next time. Well, if Christ tarries, I will see you in heaven. If not, I'll see you next time. But before we leave, let's take our benedictions may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship with the holy spirit is with us now and forevermore and surely god's goodness mercy and favor follow us all the days of our life as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever in jesus mighty name amen glory to god i say see you later